Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the next Foreman Deep Dive. Uh, today, we've got John, who's going to be giving us a look at uh, Foreman Maintain, which, if you don't know, is a tool that we use to kind of ensure the health of your system and uh, help you, particularly around upgrades and things like this. Uh, so uh, I'm going to hand over to John right away. Uh, do be aware that this is uh, going to be a deep dive into how to develop on it specifically. So this isn't going to be so much about a demo of how it works, but more about how to, how to work on it, how to improve it and extend it. Uh, always remember, uh, you can come and talk to us, uh, Freenode IRC or YouTube Live. I'll be keeping an eye on both of those for questions. Um, and do bump up that quality in your little settings menu because YouTube tends to default to really bad quality and you won't be able to see any of the text. OK, John, over to you. All right. Uh, thanks, Greg. Um, so my name is John Mitch. I am on the Catello team. And I will be going over uh, form maintain and how to develop on form maintain. And I'll start by just a short overview of what form maintain is. Uh, like Greg said, this isn't a, um, a demo so much, but more talking about how form maintain works, the internals, um, and going through development on form maintain and how to do that. Uh, so we'll be doing that with an example command. And we'll also walk through a existing command and how it works. And then I'll talk about some more resources for form maintain. Uh, so what is form maintain? It is a command line tool that has various commands for maintenance, upgrade, um, backup, health of a foreman, Tello, or satellite server. Uh, it was originally created, uh, one of the main reasons it was created was to assist with satellite upgrades, which can be quite complex, but it does work across platforms, which makes it unique as a tool that you can use it not only, you can use the same tool and the same version, not only on Catello, but on Foreman, and also people use it on satellite as well. And uh, it also works across versions on those platforms. So you're not on Foreman 1.17, you're not using a different version of Form Maintain than you would use on Foreman 1.16. Um, so that also makes it unique and different than a lot of tools. Um, so it is supporting a wide variety of not only uh, platforms, but different versions. And there's some caveats to this. Uh, some commands like Catello upgrades that needs to be added. There's some open issues for that. I mean, it, it is a tool uh, a, a fairly new tool that's still in development, so keep that in mind. But uh, that, so why do, why should you care about developing on form and maintain? Uh, a lot of new functionality has recently been added in addition to upgrades, and this functionality replaces existing functionalities. For instance, we have service subcommand, which is replacing Catello service the backup subcommand, which is replacing Catello backup, and the restore, which is replacing Catello restore. And that those uh, scripts are, that backup and restore scripts are actually going to be um, removed. Well, not fully removed. They're going to display a message to use form and maintain backup and restore. Uh, and then that is going to go into Catello 3.7. So that's a fairly large change in the flow of things. And one of the reasons we did that was to support Mongo, um, the newer Mongo versions. And also, we just want a centralized place for all these commands. So it is a nice, for maintain is a nice opportunity for us to centralize all of our uh, system operations and things that live in scripts. And um, anyone who develops on Formula or Catella, you know some of these scripts can be a little spread out and they're in different packaging repos. Um, so we're trying to centralize that more. And there's there's more opportunity uh, for things to be moved to form and maintain. And I think, so I think it is important that uh, everyone knows how to develop on form and maintain, which is the reason for this demo today. So this is a high level overview of the internals of form and maintain and how everything fits together. And I'm gonna go into an example command as well, but first we're going to start and just discuss things from a, a high level perspective. So you have your command, um, a subcommand, whether that's the, the upgrade or backup, store, service, etc. 
and then that is going to create a scenario. So the scenario is going to put together all these checks and procedures. So a check would be um, some sort of assertion on your system. So you can be asserting that a package is there or a file contains a certain uh, thing, or maybe it's checking something with sync plans or things like that. Um, and so there's various things that checks can do, but it ultimately comes down to some assertion is made before the, um, the command can continue. And then there's procedures, and procedures are going to be creating a sort of, uh, uh, it's going to be creating an operation on your machine. So actually making some sort of change. So for instance, it could migrate pulp. Uh, it could do a SQL dump. It could be disabling sync plans, um, all pretty much anything you could do on your system, you can put into a procedure and have it do that. And so the scenario is getting all those in order, in the order that's specified, and then it's calling the form maintain runner, which is gonna go through all these different uh, checks and procedures in the order specified and execute them uh, and then there's certain logic in there that it's going to acknowledge. Um, and if any task fails, then the the whole command will exit and it will display uh, some error message. And all of that output is handled by a reporter. And that's what, where you're getting your, your output from form and maintain. So I'm going to go into an example command here. Um, I created just a very simple command that creates a delicious sandwich for you. And I have my branch here. Um, you can find it in the slides, the link, or you can just type in bit.do slash foreman dash sandwich. And I will pull that up here. So here I'm in uh, web form maintain CLI.rb and this is where all these subcommands, the high level subcommands are declared. So you see health, upgrade, service, backup, restore, advanced, and sandwich. Oh, first I actually, let me, let me actually demo this first so we know what things are doing. So I go to my help menu. You can see all the different subcommands there. Have one make a sandwich. And it's taking parameters, uh, a sandwich name, and ingredients. So let's say ingredient. Do some sourdough, salami, cheese, and John's lunch. Play the name. So now it's running a check, and then it's running a procedure, um, which is making a delicious sandwich and an ice cold beverage there. All right. So if we go to this lib uh, formatting cli.rb, we see the subcommand here. And that is calling this sandwich command class. which is declared here in lib form maintain CLI slash sandwich command .rb. Um, So this is taking parameters and options, which you saw in the help menu there. And form maintain is based on the clamp CLI gem. Um, the nice thing about form maintain, it doesn't have a lot of dependencies, but this is one of them. And if you're familiar with Hammer, I, I believe that is also based on clamp as well. So that's where the syntax is coming from. Um, if you are adding new commands, you'll probably have to check the clamp syntax for the uh, how to write those. So it's taking a parameter, an option, and then it is creating a scenario here. Um, and it's passing in these variables, which are passed in through the option and the parameter. And clamp creates these instance variables for us, which is very helpful. Uh, and then it is going to call the runner, which is just running the scenario. 
and it's going to exit based on the runner's exit code. So based on how those commands were executed, it is going to exit. So we go to this scenario. We can see there's a metadata block here. And that's going to take various information about the scenario. And this, I'm in um, definitions slash scenarios. Uh, and that's going to take a description. It's going to take parameters for that scenario. Um, and currently, I have something that needs to be added to certain scenarios and checks called manual detection, which means don't use this for upgrades. And that may change in the future once forming as form maintain expands to different use cases besides upgrades, but um, uh, upgrades can pull in a lot of different checks. So I added that in there uh, and that's added in some of the other commands we'll see. Uh, and then every scenario is gonna have this compose, this compose method, which is going to put together the steps that you're gonna use uh, that are gonna be executed by the runner and here I'm using this add steps with context, and there's different ways to add steps, which I'll, I'll explain once we go into a, a, an, an actual command. But this is going to add steps with information being passed in. So you can think of it like a, a large function. If this was a, a function or a method, this would be uh, passing in different arguments to that. And to do that, to pass in that information, because we want the ingredients, we want the sandwich name in the in the checks and the procedures, we're going to map the uh, we're going to map this all together. So we're going to have the ingredients, and then we're going to map it, and it's going to pass in this ingredients parameter um, to the check and to the procedure. So we pass in all that information, and we go to the first check. This is this is also in definitions, so definition slash checks, um, and then a sub directory sandwich ingredients.rb. So this is also taking a metadata block. One um, one interesting thing about form maintain the metadata you can do quite a bit in the metadata, and that's all detailed in the. If you go to the repo and go to the readme, you can see a lot of information about the different things you can pass into metadata and you can see it through different examples. I'm not going to go through every single thing, but we do, we have a description here. Um, we have a label and then we have our parameters, which we, which we are passing in. So the parameters that we're passing in are done through this, this context mapping. Uh, and we're saying, okay, include these parameters in here. Um, and then, you can add something which I didn't do here because there is no sandwich feature, unfortunately, on uh, Foreman or Tello machines. Um, but you can add in a confine block, which will confine things to a certain feature, which I'll explain what features are. But this is saying if, if you have the sandwich feature on your system, then you can do this check. So that's going to do that logic of does this exist? Uh, can I run it? So an, an example of that would be pulp. We have a pulp feature here. And pulp, um, in the metadata of the feature, we're saying confine the pulp feature to uh, when we have the package pulp server. So if we ran this on Foreman, the pulp feature would not exist. If we ran it on Catello, the pulp feature exists. So if I wanted my check for some reason, I want to make sandwiches when I have pulp on my system, uh, I can add this feature pulp into the confined block and then it will check for pulp on the system. It will check for that package. If that package is there, it's going to run this check. So that's a nice way to keep the logic. You can keep it out of the scenario and just add in the checks and the procedures. Um, in there and then have these confined blocks and, and put logic in there whether or not you want the check to run. Uh, so a check is going to have a method, a run method, and then that is where you are doing your assertions. On here, you can see I'm just asserting that the ingredients are longer. You have more than one ingredient in there, and then I'm just sleeping for two seconds to pretend like it's doing something more complicated. Um, and there are, are these handy spinner functions, which 
make for nice output and you can actually update the spinners, which I'll show you in this uh, sandwich assemble procedure, which if we go back to our scenario, we see that we have this, um, we're adding this sandwich assemble procedure into our steps. So first we're doing the check and then we're doing the procedure and these are gonna run in order uh, that they're, they're declared here. And that's taking metadata as well. Um, and there's something called tags, which is interesting. You can tag a bunch of procedures or tag a bunch of checks and you can just find the checks or the procedures with that tag in the scenario. So you don't have to keep declare them all. Um, it will automatically detect all of them. Uh, and this was a little line I had to add in for the advanced procedures, which I'll get into, but this is very similar in that I am creating a spinner um, and then I'm pretending things are happening. Uh, you would put in operations, different things going on and update the spinner as necessary. And then we're just printing uh, the sandwich here and printing out some nice ASCII art of a delicious sandwich. So that is basically the, the workflow. I tried to keep a, a very simple example um, just to show the workflow. And again, we're going, we're declaring a subcommand that's being called, that's creating a scenario and then running that scenario. Scenario is declared, we're passing in different parameters, we're adding the steps, we're adding some context here, and then we're calling the check, uh, which is added in the steps, and then calling the assemble, um, calling it a procedure, which is added in the steps. Um, so that's, that in a nutshell is for maintain and and the workflow behind it. All right. So we talked about commands, scenarios, checks, procedures. We talked about features. Um, I'm going to walk through a store very quickly. I think that's a good example of uh, a command. Um, so here we have the subcommand restore. And again, it's calling the restore command class, which is declared here. This is in lib form maintain CLI restore command. And that's taking parameters, backup directory, is it incremental uh, backup? And it's creating a scenario very similar to the previous command. It's gonna pass in those incremental um, and backup directory instance variables and then it's going to run the scenario. Uh, and then this is where it's gonna be a little more complicated, but it's the same idea. We are adding in a bunch of steps and there's various ways to add those steps um, in this compose method. Uh, so for instance, in this, we can add multiple steps based on checks um, and these steps don't have context. And we can say, find all the checks with the root user tag, which we have a check right here uh, that's tagged with the root user. And we're adding in those steps and then we're adding in a bunch of steps with context. Uh, we're doing some, some conditional um, adding in of steps based on the backup. And if we go down here, we can see we have a larger context mapping of mapping the backup directory to different checks and procedures that need it, needs it passed in. Um, and then also in the incremental backup, we're mapping that and adding that into two different procedures here. So for instance, we have validate backup and that's being passed in backup directory in this context mapping. And that is here where we, we are asserting that the backup is a valid backup and then uh, displaying a message based on that. Um, and then that logic is in a, a class here, utils slash backup. Uh, so it's, you can see it's the same simple concepts for checks and procedures, but it gets a little more complicated when you're doing more complex operations on a system. Um, and that is the main idea behind the internals. Uh, I think before we 
go any further. Greg, are there any questions so far? Nope, I've been keeping an eye on it, and uh, so far everyone seems pretty content with what you're showing. Great. And I will walk through. So there's also advanced commands in form maintain, and you can run procedures outside of a scenario. This is really nice for uh, more power users. And if you just, if something failed and you just want to rerun a step after tweaking something in your machine, you don't want to run the previous steps. Um, this can be a really helpful way to do so. So you go to the form and pain help. You can see there's a advanced subcommand, and that's going to have procedure, which has a run, and and there's quite a few uh, procedures in here that you can run. You can see like pulp migrate, package install, um, sync plans disable, sync plans enable. So if I go to the procedure that we declared, sandwich assemble. It's showing the parameters that I added in to the procedure, the ingredients parameter, and the sandwich name. Yeah. Yes. Put some rye. Ami. Twist. Sandwich name. Ruben. So that's going to run the just the procedure and create another delicious sandwich. And uh, yeah, so that's a way to just run procedures on their own. So before I get to final ask for questions, so this there are a bunch of resources for Forum Maintain. I think there's also been demos on Forum Maintain on the upgrade. Um, Subcommand. I think that was in a community demo. Hopefully, we'll have more demos uh, for some of the newer functionality in there. Um, and the documentation is is very good for form and maintain. It it goes through everything I discussed, and it goes through a lot more about the metadata and the different tags. Uh, so do check out the README on the the repo. Um, Clamp. You can go to the Clamp repo for the the syntax of using Clamp. And the best place to ask is just the form and dev, which I'm sure most people are familiar with. Um, all right, that is it for me. Do we have any questions? No, we don't. I think you've been pretty thorough there. It's a good example. Uh, thank you for working through that. Um, I'll add, but uh, obviously, if, uh, if anyone's out there thinking of working on adding some stuff to form and maintain, do come and tell us about it. Um, we'd love to hear about it. Um, I can help you get it on a on a community demo, as John mentioned, or or something like that. Um, or at the very least, just you know, post in the forum and tell us about it. Right. Um, have you got any last comments, John, before we wrap it up? No, that that is it for me. All right. Well, in that case, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, you know where to find us. I'm going to bore you with like and subscribe nonsense. Um, but uh, Foreman uh, channel on YouTube, Matrix, Freenode our forum. Come chat with us if you get stuck, if you're playing with this stuff, or if you just liked it, come and say hi. That's all for now, though. We will see you again on Thursday for the next community demo. Until then, do take care.